Let's talk about ChatGPT plugins. It's a new feature, a new addition from ChatGPT team. It's a huge thing because it changes the way you can use this text interface and do a lot more things with it. So OpenAI has released a new initiative known as ChatGPT plugins, which is a huge thing. If you're a developer, if you're someone who is even remotely interested into AI, you should know this because this changes how you can use ChatGPT software, how you interact with it, how you build applications maybe of the future and maybe this is the future so let's figure out what this is together in this new blog post from OpenAI and what you should be knowing as a developer how you can start learning these things if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow so you see this is a blog post from OpenAI a couple of days ago and there is documentation for chat GPT plugins already because it is available to some people right you can sign up for the plugins waitlist and if you're accepted you can start building, start developing these chat plugins. So the more important thing is that use this or consider this thing as almost as an app store, right? So chat GPT is a text-based AI layer, which they are saying that anyone can access. But on top of this, plugins is almost like additional functionality built into the chat GPT interface. Now these plugins can make it smarter, make the AI smarter by giving it data, right? That is pretty much the only thing which a plugin will do. AI can use natural language processing, it uses NLP, it understands natural language context, and it can do whatever you ask it, but there are some things it can't do. For example, imagine I am asking ChatGPT to write a blog post and also publish it on my blog, right? Just one instance. Or maybe I'm asking ChatGPT to whatever this response it sent me the last time, send it to a Slack server. It cannot move out of the browser window, right? This plugins interface will help you build interfaces which can help chat gpt move outside of the browser interface so this is a step one people are saying that you know this is an app store this will change the world and so on but what i feel is that this is the step one of a smarter ai moving out of just a window into your actual environment right these plugins can be anything if we take a look at the plugins which are currently available or which OpenAI has worked with these are some of the plugins wolfram alpha is a huge addition because as we know earlier versions of chat GPT haven't done maths very well but if you combine it with Wolfram and chat GPT is using this for the computational part then of course it makes much more sense that calculations will, will be much more rock solid similarly Instacart is a startup in US which is very popular for ordering local grocery and you can ask chat GPT what should I eat today maybe I'm feeling a little down and you know you can get some groceries delivered right to your home done by chat GPT as an interface this is something I think a lot of people talk a few years back about voice that you know you ask your google assistant or siri to do something and it'll get it done it'll add it to your to-do list and coordinate with the end store and get your order delivered but that apparently never happened or even if it did like you know if there was any sort of startup or company doing it it probably will be killed by something like this now imagine that there is a plugin over here which can also execute code right so chat gpt gives you something you install that plugin it might as well be code down we are waiting for the plugin approval so we are in the wait list but imagine that there's a plugin which executes code you click on a button it takes chat gpt takes the code and sends it the benefit of this is that chat gpt does not have to hallucinate the output right it does not have to hallucinate because it's not an actual computer it just tells you what it feels it has seen over the data. But with these computational units, Wolfram, CodeDamp plugin maybe, you can actually get much more predictable output from a natural language processing engine like ChatGPT. Let's take a look at this video. You can see that in this video, ChatGPT, you select the model as browsing. You can see it's an alpha. So this model will be available to ChatGPT plus users very soon. But you see, you ask it how this, you know, something which has recently happened and it browses the web first, right? Because using a plugin, which makes ChatGPT browse the web first, it browses the web first through Bing a API or anything, then makes sense of the data and then gives you the response. So this effectively, I don't think like, you know, anyone will use really Bing chat because that was one of the major selling points of Bing as a search engine that they had installed ChatGPT-like interface, but now ChatGPT has 
basically overthrown Bing Chat, right? Because we all know that it is better than Bing Chat AI, but now it can also browse web. It has a code interpreter, which is something that can run Python in a sandbox mode. So it can actually execute code now, finally, instead of, you know, just saying that, you know, this is how the output would look like, where it clearly tries to either dry run the code or hallucinate the output. But now if you have this as a combined, as a plugin, it can actually execute real Python binary, right? Up to the system level it can run the code it can get the output and it can show you that because it understands things and this is a huge thing because now one of the things which was something which is like you know not a good thing is chat gpt hallucinates and gives confident answers but if that is backed by deterministic systems which is like coding and programming and wolfram alpha which is like good mathematics and computation engine then there is no doubt right the answers would be correct because all it's doing now it's just using those services on behalf of you using natural language which we know it is good at right by doing something like this by introducing plugins in the interface what open ai has done is that it has scaled the hallucination aspect in a lot of places at least in the code space and you know in the computation space but again it also unlocks a lot of interesting things like for example let's take a look at this video you can see you can tell it you want to plot a graph of some function basically again one of these things which are available on internet i think desmos was one of the tools which i used a lot for graph plotting gone right <laughs> i can just now ask ChatGPT enable the code interpreter plugin and it can just give me graph then i can zoom into it of course like these interfaces would not be interactive right so this might be just an image but we don't know like maybe these plugins are so sophisticated so advanced and chat gpt gives us much more in-depth ai much more in-depth control of the space which we have rented from chat gpt that we can create interactive interfaces as well i mean it's not the day is not far that maybe we develop a plugin where you know we say like me a simple discord bot it uses a plugin like code dam it boots up an environment over here or even does not just gives you the code and then you can ask it for an environment and it can give you a playground link why because it already knows who you are it knows what code dam is it knows what the playground is it can create those things on the fly and then give you the source code with a playground interface which is super interesting because if that happens this software has officially penetrated all the services which it is using right now this will become an operating system or this will become almost like your homepage in a way when you start your work you don't start it with google or gmail you just start it here right you just start with chat.openai.com and you ask it give me some new updates for today and it'll connect with your gmail plugin it'll connect with your slack plugin and it'll tell you you have four emails unread out of which two seems like spam and one email is like important because it's from a vc or something so you should maybe respond to that you have four conversations on slack two of them are in the fun group and you know maybe you can take them later but one is in the bug reports so i mean this ai has pretty much i mean you're still using chat.openai as a website but it has given access to all the things you're doing in your real life and you as developers have the option now to build these plugin interfaces i mean it's not a it's not an ambitious bet to say that this might be the future of a lot of things right a lot of tools a lot of tooling will get deprecated will get removed but you have as a developer if you want to do it for your own thing instead of just launching it for everyone you have to know how to learn to code right i mean chat gpt can help you build a plugin as well at some point but still i mean for granular control for very specific things you should be learning coding because even if it gives you the output you are the one who can only deploy it until again somebody has a plugin which connects it to your aws account you have to set up your aws account until again somebody gives a plugin which connects to your bank account and does that i mean i can't contradict myself at every point because these plugins pretty much extend outside extend to the outside world they say there are safety considerations which of course is true because you know once you give access to outside the world your firewalls break down right chat gpt runs in a very firewall environment but if you have given it access to a tool which could be like any sort of tool not safe for work tools as well then those safety considerations should kick in place and that's why i think they will be i think heavily you know just taking a look at what sort of plugins you are making and proving only the ones which fall their terms and conditions these 
plugins, like I said, can be coded with a manifest file. And I mean, of course you're coding for an AI which actually understands English. So you don't have to do a lot of work, but still you have to provide it with some information on how the plugin operates, how your end system operates, and it can do the rest of the things. And one of the things which I'm really interested in is that if ChatGPT aims to release the plugins model to the outside world, they have the APIs released to the outside world. Now imagine if they release plugins to the outside API world as well, so that people can build the same interface on their own. This, if they do that, then this will kill the app store idea, but this will improve the user experience of pretty much every app on the planet. How? Because now imagine you're using CodeDAM and we have, let's say, plugin integration for Stack Overflow. I mean, ChatGPT already knows all the data on Stack Overflow, but let's say something around GitHub right where if you are creating a private repository on github and if you are asking chat gpt to ask you know that this code is not working it's on my github repo i mean not the best example but you get the idea right code dam can use or tap into private data and private code bases thanks to the plugin interface which open ai provides so there are a lot of possibilities a lot of opportunities but i'm not really sure that open ai will do that because that kills a very very strong idea that open ai makes chat gpt as an operating system and these plugins are built on top of that but the future is going to be interesting it's going to be super interesting because i like what is happening in the ai space to be very honest i did not consider gpt as a threat or you know as something of a very big of a deal i mean it was a great deal when gpt 2 2.5 also came out but when text davinci 003 model was released and chat gpt was released a few days later it just got me off my comfort horse of that everything is fine everything is not fine the world is changing and you are witnessing it one day at a time and if you're watching this if you are not doing something about this as a developer then you're missing out on something huge right this is a paradigm shift this is something which doesn't happen it's almost like a once in a lifetime thing and microprocessors for example or computers 50 60 years when they were first getting mainstream and not exactly mainstream but were first getting developed it was a huge thing and this is the second thing which which I feel is a huge thing. For the first time ever, you can talk to an interface which is not human. Think about that. This is the first time. It's not an alien. It might have been an alien first or it could have been computers, but for the first time in a non-fiction or in reality, you can talk to a system like you would talk to another human and it understands you. It can do things and the best thing, it's available 24 seven and it can basically now get out of the screen also in a way with these plugins interface. And I mean, it's just a matter of time when two years, five years, 10 years down the line, they also start creating robots, put chat GPT or GPT 10 or 15 model into that. And they probably are smarter than most of the humans around you but again like the benefit of having a software as a layer is that it's accessible to so many people with hardware of course you have limitations but you get the idea right so maybe we'll do a bunch of more videos i'll do a bunch of more videos on how do you develop chat gpt plugins once we get access to the plugins waitlist but i want to know what do you think about this do you think this is impressive if yes do you have support do you have applied for it a wait list do you have access what are you thinking of building i want to know let me know in the comments below that is all for this video i hope you like this i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching